let's go over oxidation numbers and how to assign or determine oxidation numbers to help us figure out whether a substance has been oxidized or reduced. So as I've discussed in a previous video, we can assign oxidation numbers to substances in a chemical reaction. If we see an increase in oxidation number, that means that my substance has been oxidized. So for example, over here, you can see that potassium goes from an oxidation number of zero to plus one, increasing, therefore showing that oxidation has occurred. And chlorine in this case has gone from zero to negative one, a decrease in oxidation, therefore showing reduction. But what are oxidation numbers and how do we assign them? Now, as you know, oxidation numbers, or I hope you know, is like a charge or a probable charge of an atom or an ion. Now, I hope you remember from grade 10, we taught you the different valencies or charges associated with the periodic table. So if you get a periodic table in a test or in an exam, you know that at the top of the periodic table, you can write plus one on the top of the group one metals, then plus two over here, then plus three, plus minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. These are the charges or the valencies. So for example, magnesium, the magnesium ion has a charge of plus two. What that means is that magnesium needs to lose two electrons in order to be have a complete outer structure, essentially. And if we look at something like chlorine, chlorine is over here. Its ion is the chloride ion, Cl minus. It means it needs to gain an electron to form a chloride ion, Cl minus. And a lot of the times, our oxidation number actually corresponds with these charges or valencies or probable charges. So an oxidation number of an element is a number that we assign to each element in a compound to keep track of how electrons move during a reaction. And like I said, it usually corresponds with the valency or the charge. But there are exceptions, so you must know your rules for assigning oxidation numbers. Here is a long comprehensive list of the rules for assigning oxidation numbers, but I simplified it for you into these nine rules. And we'll be going over each of these different rules now with examples. My first rule says the oxidation number of atoms in free elements. When we say free elements, we mean things that are not bonded. That oxidation number is zero. So for example, if I had to say Ca plus whatever, give another compound, gives you, so blah, blah, blah. this Ca is not bonded, it's free, it's standing by itself, so its oxidation number would be zero. This rule also applies to diatomic elements like oxygen, chlorine, hydrogen, nitrogen, and also to things like P4S8. So, for example, the oxidation number of sodium, when sodium is unbonded, now remember, I'm not talking about sodium if it's found within a compound, like here. This is different, I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about sodium by itself, zero. S8, zero. Iron by itself. Again, I'm not talking about FeCl3 or something like that. I'm not talking about that. Just standing by itself is zero. Nitrogen, a diatomic gas, by itself is zero. My next rule says in simple ions, the oxidation number is the same as the charge on the iron. So for example, it says here yeah, Mg2+. Plus. That over there, the 2+. Plus, plus two, that's the oxidation number. This is a bit small, but this says Br minus. So the oxidation number is negative one. This says Fe3 plus. So the oxidation number is plus three. If you take a look at this equation, for example, this is saying Fe4 plus plus an electron gives me Fe3 plus. The oxidation number of Fe4 plus is plus four. The oxidation number of Fe3 plus is plus three. And what happened over here to the oxidation number? It went of iron, essentially. It went from plus four to plus three. Do you see that it decreased? There was a decrease in oxidation number. And remember what I told you about a decrease in oxidation number? It means that my substance has been reduced or reduction has taken place. And you can see that according to this equation, Fe4 plus has gained an electron. And in my previous video, we spoke, spoke about oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons, oil, oxidation is loss, rig, reduction is gain. Here you can clearly see that Fe4 plus is being reduced. It's gaining an electron and forming Fe3 plus. There's a decrease in the oxidation number, okay? The substance is essentially becoming less positive. Plus four to plus three, less positive. Decrease in oxidation number because it's gaining a negative. It makes sense. 
So just to reiterate the past two rules, if I had to ask you the oxidation number of these two things, here you would say plus three because it is equal to this charge over here. And here iron is standing by itself, so it would be zero. So for example, if it was like Fe plus O2 gives you blah, 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 this oxidation number here is zero. And so is oxygen here for that, for that matter. Next rule, the oxidation number of group one metals. Now you will recall that these are the group one metals. This is a snapshot of the table. You know that it continues down there, but these are the group one metals. And they say that the oxidation number is plus one. That makes sense because the valency, the charge of this group is plus one. So for example, if I give you NaCl and I ask you for the oxidation number of Na, of sodium, you need to know the rule that says group one metals, sodium is a group one metal, that oxidation number is plus one. What I then could ask you if I had to give you this compound is I would say, therefore, what is the oxidation number of Cl? You would say, let's write this a bit bigger so you can see, NaCl, we know because of our rule that sodium Na is a group one metal, so this oxidation number is plus one, Cl, chlorine, that oxidation number must be negative one. The reason why is because this must add up to zero. This rule is coming in a little bit later, but NaCl is a neutral compound, which means that it doesn't have a charge over here. Because of that, it means that the oxidation numbers must add up to zero. So similarly, if this was our example, you would know that potassium over here is a group one metal. There it is, which means its oxidation number is plus one. So chlorine over here is negative one because it must add up to zero. We're going to go through more examples of this later where it must add up to zero. So don't stress about that yet. My next rule says the oxidation number of a group two metal. So that's these ones over here is plus two. And again, it makes sense because of the valencies or the charges. So for example, magnesium is plus two. So if I had to give you a compound such as this MGS, and I had to ask you, what is the oxidation number of sulfur in this compound? You would look at this compound and you would say, well, magnesium Mg, I know that there's a rule for that. The oxidation number for magnesium, for group two metals here, magnesium, this is a hard and fast rule, is plus two. So if magnesium is plus two, because this is a neutral compound, it must add up to zero. So what must this number be to make this equation equal zero? Sulfur must be negative two. Think about it mathematically. Two minus two gives you zero. And therefore, you would say the oxidation number for sulfur is equal to negative two. Done. Again, why must it equal zero? Because this is a neutral compound. It doesn't have a charge up here. Contrast this with something like CO3 two minus. This has a charge up here. So later we'll get to a rule like this but here the oxidation numbers wouldn't have to equal zero no they would have to equal negative two because of this charge up here okay how would you do this one CaCl2 in this question I would ask you to calculate the oxidation number of Cl just Cl over here so you would know calcium again calcium is over here it's a group two metal so group two metal it's got an oxidation number of plus two so calcium is plus two that means that this portion of the molecule, this must add up to zero. So this portion of the molecule must be negative two. But this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Because if you say to me, okay, calcium is plus two because the rule told me it's plus two. So we know that. We know that that's plus two. That's all good. If you tell me your answer is that chlorine must have an oxidation number of negative two, then I'm going to tell you that you are wrong. The reason why you are wrong is because this part of the molecule must have an oxidation number of negative two. But if you look carefully, there isn't one chlorine molecule involved. There's two chlorine molecules involved. Therefore, negative two represents two chlorine molecules. So negative two divided by two, you just divide by that little number there. Therefore, one chlorine molecule would have an oxidation number of negative one. And again, that kind of makes sense because we know chlorine has a charge of negative one. You see over there, group 17, negative one. So it does all make sense. We're going to practice more like that, so don't worry. Our next rule is that hydrogen is usually plus one. Again, not too difficult for you to remember or to understand because hydrogen is in group one where there's a charge of plus one. So there's a rule that says hydrogen is plus one, exception, and here's where the exceptions come in. When hydrogen is bonded to a group one metal, to form a metal hydride, like potassium hydride. Now, remember, potassium is also in group one. It's also a group one metal. If you take a look at our group ones over here, 
there's potassium. So potassium and hydrogen are both in group one. So in this case, when hydrogen is bonded with a group one metal, then it's the group one metal that has a charge of plus one. Remember, this must equal zero. So that means that hydrogen in this case would be negative one. Hydrogen would have an oxidation number of negative one in this case. However, under all other circumstances, hydrogen is plus one. So in this case, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen is plus one, chlorine is therefore negative one. We also have a rule for oxygen. So hydrogen and oxygen are special ones. They have their own rule. The rule for oxygen is that oxygen is usually negative two. Again, not a surprise to us because if you look at my periodic table, you guys know it goes plus one, plus two, plus three, plus minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one and zero. Look at where oxygen is. Oxygen is with the negative two. So it's not difficult to remember that, but there are exceptions and that is when Oxygen is bonded in a peroxide such as H2O2 or when oxygen is in a bond with fluorine. So let's look at a normal situation first. So here we know that this must add up to zero. We know that oxygen, this is a normal situation. It's not a peroxide. This would be a peroxide H2O2 and it's not in a bond with fluorine. So it's a normal situation. Oxygen is negative two. What that means is that this portion of the molecule has an oxidation number of plus two, but there's two hydrogens here. Therefore, one hydrogen would have an oxidation number of negative, or sorry, positive one. So again, this portion of the molecule is plus two, but there's two hydrogens. So you say two divided by two. You divide like that, divided by two. That's where you get the plus one from. It makes sense that hydrogen is plus one anyway. That's a rule we learned before. Here is my exception. So here, because it's H2O2, it's a peroxide, hydrogen peroxide. It's our exception. We don't start with the oxygen. We start with the hydrogen. So hydrogen is plus one. That's a rule we learned. There's two of them though. So we have to multiply it by two. What this means is that this portion of the molecule has a charge of plus two. Remember, this must all add up to zero. That's how it works in a neutral compound. Again, it's neutral because there's no sign or no charge up here, no plus or minus up here. So this portion of the molecule overall is plus two. That means that, let's just use colors so that everybody can see what I'm saying. That means that this portion of the molecule here must be minus two. Why minus two? Because plus two minus two, well, that gives me zero and that's what it must be. So the pink portion of the molecule is negative two, but there's two oxygens. So you say negative two divided by two. So therefore in this molecule, oxygen has a oxidation number of negative one. Do you see that's different to my rule? My rule says it's usually negative two. Same thing here in this case. In this case, we look at fluorine first. There is actually a rule about fluorine. Here it is. It's number seven on this page. The oxidation number of fluorine is always negative one. So we start with fluorine. So fluorine is negative one. But in this compound, there's two of them. Okay. This must equal to zero because that's a rule. What this is telling me is that this portion of the molecule would have a charge of negative two. What that means, okay, so the yellow portion has a charge of negative two overall. What that means is that oxygen, what number must come here in the little green box? Something minus two gives me zero. You can also do algebra. You can put an X there. X minus two equals zero. So what must X be? X must be two. So therefore, the oxygen in this case has a charge of plus two, oxidation number rather, of plus two, not negative two like it usually is. It's very important to learn and understand the exceptions. Now we're going to take a look at number eight. In a neutral compound, the sum of the oxidation numbers of the atoms is zero. So as I mentioned, a neutral compound is something where there's no plus or minus up here. So for example, if I had to say uh, two minus over here, then that's no longer a neutral compound. Or if I had to say a little plus up here, then that's no longer a neutral compound. But if there's nothing here, then imagine a little invisible zero. So contrast this to something like CO3 to minus. Here we go. This is not a neutral compound because it's got a little negative two up here. Okay, so if it is a neutral compound, then the oxidation numbers must add up to zero. 
So this question says, find the oxidation number of chlorine in this compound. So we start with potassium here. We are going to use the rule. So potassium, I'm using this rule. The oxidation number of group one metals is plus one. We know that potassium is a group one metal. In other words, it's in the first row of the periodic table. I've scribbled over all of this here. But here's potassium. It's a group one metal. So its oxidation number is plus one. So that's where I start. So K is plus one. Then oxygen. You know I have a rule about oxygen. The oxidation number for oxygen is usually negative two. So in this case, we've got oxygen is negative two. But in this molecule, there's three of them. So I must times it by three. Now, a lot of my students get confused by this. They say, ma'am, so is the oxidation number of oxygen in this compound negative two or is it a negative two times three? So negative six. Very good question. The oxidation number of oxygen stays negative two. So the oxidation number of oxygen is negative two. The reason why I'm multiplying it by three and getting a negative six is because I have to look at this piece of the compound overall. So it's negative six overall for this piece of the compound. It's plus one for this piece of the compound. It must equal zero. So what must this be over here? We can add an X to help us figure it out. So I've got plus one plus X minus six must give me zero. If you think mathematically, I hope that it's obvious. This is one. Okay, so x must be 5 because 1 plus 5 is 6 and then minus 6, that would give me 0. So x must be 5. Or you can just solve for it algebraically. So leave the x on this side. Take the 6 over, it becomes plus 6. Take the 1 over, it becomes minus 1. So you get 5 either way. So the oxidation number for chlorine in this compound is plus 5. And I know you might say, oh, but ma'am, wasn't chlorine's oxidation number negative 1 in other compounds? For example, HCl. Yes, it was, because hydrogen is plus one, making chlorine negative one. But can you see that the oxidation number can change depending on what it's bonded to? That's why it's very important to follow the rules. So in this compound, it's plus five. Moving on to our last rule, and that is for a polyatomic iron. Polyatomic ions, they have charges because it's an iron. In other words, it's not a neutral compound. The oxidation number is not going to add up to zero. In this case, it's always going to add up to whatever the charge is of the iron. So negative two in this case. Just be careful. For example, if it's a nitrate iron, then that's a negative one. So this would have to add up to negative one. So it's whatever the charge is of the iron. So it's going to add up to a negative two. Then you follow your rules like normal. They want the oxidation number of S. So we're looking for this. We can call it X. O4, oxygens, four oxygens. We know that oxygen is negative two, but there's four of them. What that means, it's x, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. If you want to take the negative 8 over, you're going to get plus 8 on that side. So you're going to end up with 6. 6, the oxidation number of sulfur in this compound is plus 6, positive 6. Again, here is a summary of all of those rules. I hope that this helped you. In the next video, I'll be doing an activity on assigning oxidation numbers. Can't wait to see you in that video. Please let me know what else you'd like to see in the comments below. Bye, everybody.